Hey everybody, this is the Fairy Vibrant Makeup Channel, and I'm, excuse the lighting, it's raining today, but I really wanted to get this filmed. I did film a tutorial on this look. I had originally done a rose gold kind of champagne look using the Amore Metallics liquid lipsticks from Milani, and I ended up deleting it accidentally. Don't ask me how that happened, it just did. But anyways, I went ahead and just redid it and used um, actually three of the colors from the line to create this look. So if you want to see that look, I already posted it, so I will leave that link down below to that video. So let's get into what this video is about. So this video is going to be about this palette, which is the Urban Decay Disney's Alice in the Looking Glass palette. That's a lot to say. But anyways, um, this palette retails for $60 and it is available at the Ulta stores, it is available on Ulta.com, Sephora, Sephora.com, UrbanDecay.com, all of that I will leave down below in the description box. But this is the palette. So this is the box and as you can see it has this like psychedelic type of uh, display and then on the back of the box of course with signature Urban Decay it always has all the shadows and their colors right there so you can see what you're getting inside the palette alright so this is the actual palette now the palette's that cardboard material um, it's very very uh, sturdy cardboard material but again it has that design same as the box it's the exact same design on the front onto the box and it's just a little bit of embossed like raised parts right here and it says of course Alice through the looking glass right there and on the back it's more of those psychedelic designs and then on the sides it has this like black and white type of rose or floral thing going on here all right so let's get it. so it has a relatively large mirror right here and it says we are all mad right on the mirror. And then this is a pretty much typical Urban Decay type of collection deal going on here. It has like a little like display thingy and I'll get into that in a bit, but it does say, I'm not strange, weird, off, nor crazy. My reality is just different from yours, which totally sums myself up. I have a very strange rea uh, reality. I'm just very imaginative, very creative. so. A lot of people don't understand me, but that's okay. But anyways, getting into it, let's open this guy up. And this is what I'm talking about. It's got this like beautiful, like three-dimensional butterfly going on there. It's really pretty and it's just for show. So that's just the box and the majority of the palette is this box. So let me show you what's in the palette. So this is what's in the palette. This is the actual palette with all the colors. And it does come with an Urban Decay brush, which is pretty typical. And it seems like it's the same the same type of brush that typically comes in like the Vice palettes. So there's the blending brush portion and then kind of like a fluffy, um, denser part of the brush. But it does have that floral design as well on the brush. Now let's get into the swatches of each of the shades. I am going to be using my finger for one, and then I'm going to be using a brush for another. And the brush I'm going to be using today is actually going to be a Wet n Wild brush so that I can get that color and see what the color payoff is like when you apply it with a brush versus the finger. That way you can see the difference between the two because honestly, finger swatches are going to be more pigmented than actually using a brush because brushes, I mean, the warmth of your fingers is going to make it meld into your skin but versus the brush is going to be more realistic you know what I mean so I'm going to start from here over and in this perspective it actually has let me see where it's at it has on the box um, what each row going up uh, top to bottom is called so the first row right here is called Alice, so it's this is the first row. Second row is Mad Hatter. Third row is Marana. Fourth row is Erasabeth. And then Time is the last row. So I'm going to be going from Alice to Time in the swatches. So starting with the first shade is called Looking Glass. I'm going to start with a finger swatch. 
and there it is right there. It is a matte cream. And then of course, here is the swatch with a brush. You can barely see it on my skin tone, but it is a cream shade, perfect for those brow bone highlights. So next shade is Reflection. And this is the finger swatch. You can barely see it, of course, but it's like a peachy kind of, and I use it as a transition shade. It's really nice. And then here is the brush swatch. So you can kind of see, you can barely see it on my skin tone, but um, it's a very peachy matte shade. So it's perfect for transition shades. Next shade is Dormouse, and this is the finger swatch right there. And then here is the brush swatch right there. So it's kind of like this medium tan brown shade, and it is, it has sparkles in it, like gold flecks inside of it, but you can't really see it when you put it on to your eyes. The next shade is Metamorphosis. And here is the finger swatch. That actually didn't come on very well. <laughs> so sorry. So there it is right there. And then here is the brush swatch of it. So it seems like a kind of like a periwinkle shade. And this brush is getting dirty, so I'm going to switch over. So there it is right there. As you can see, the difference between a finger swatch and a brush swatch is that the brush swatch is much lighter than the finger swatch because it's a brush and that's how it's going to show up on the skin. I want to show you Metamorphosis with a base though. Alright, so I'm going to reapply my finger swatch so that way I get a better idea and then reapply my brush swatch And then I'm going to apply a base, which is Prestige Cosmetics. No, no, no. It's LA Colors Jumbo Eye Pencil. And this is in the shade Pool Party. It's the closest I can get. And then I'm going to smudge it out with my finger. So there's the base on the bottom by itself. And then I'm going to pack on Metamorphosis on top. So just doing patting motions like so. Of course, it's going to be super pigmented. So this shade does need a base because this is the finger swatch on the top. See how pale it is and then it gets paler with the uh, swatch of on the brush and then with a base it pops a lot more. So I would probably use this with a base on my face because honestly, I don't think it's going to be that pigmented. Although when I did do... Uh, a look and that was using my wet n wild brushes that look that I did I did use a uh, wet n wild Fergie pencil on the lower lash line and then put metamorphosis on top of it to make it more blue so it's not as impressively pigmented as I wanted it to be but with a base it does really pop so the next row is going to be Mad Hatter sorry my I'm trying to dry my hand here I don't want it wet because I did a makeup wipe to wipe everything off all right, so the next shade is Hatter, and this is the finger swatch. That one's pretty pigmented. And then, I'm trying to clean off my brush here, this is the brush swatch. Oh my gosh, it's very pigmented. Just had to tap some excess off. Still pretty pigmented. As you can see, that's hatter right there. It's like a green and it does have some sheen to it, almost like a satin. Next shade is Gone Mad and here's the finger swatch. That one's pretty pigmented. And then, once I clean off my brush, I probably should do this before each time, but uh, Gone Mad on a brush. So as you can see, this one's pretty pigmented. It's actually really nice. It does kind of have this sparkle to it but when you blend it with a brush it kind of I don't know it looks matte to me the next shade is paradox here's the finger swatch that one is super pigmented super like it's like a copper penny shade I'm gonna get a different brush here or at least a different um same kind of deal you know what I mean but uh, I just needed a cleaner brush so it didn't actually come on very well. I should probably just use the same brush. Oh my goodness, it doesn't pick it up at all. 
Okay. With a denser brush, it picks up the shade better. So I went two swipes with this flat brush from Wet n Wild, and then um, that's the finger swatch of Paradox. The next shade is Cake, and I did use this all over my lids in that uh, tutorial where I use my Wet n Wild brushes. I used this all over the lid, but I did have a base because it isn't that pigmented. So that's the finger swatch, and I'm gonna use that dense brush again, and I'm going to use, see how it's not that pigmented. I don't know how they, these blend don't, these don't blend amazing, but there it is. There's the brush swatch, there's the finger swatch. That's cake. The next shade is Lily, and this is from the, um, that one's actually pretty pigmented. It's like a pale, dual chrome, opalesque type of shadow, and that's from the Marana row. And then I'm going to get a dense brush. It's pretty much the same concept as this brush. And I'm going to pick up Lily and swatch it like so. I probably should have swatched it on camera, but it's kind of like a faint opalesque shade. The next shade is Duchess. There it is, finger swatched, and here it is with a brush. It's pretty. It reminds me of Fireball. It's got that peach pink duochrome. I don't know if you can see. Can you see it on my skin tone? Can't tell. The next shade is Kingdom. Sorry, it's hard to see me swatching. So there's Kingdom with the finger swatch. And then Kingdom with a brush. Barely see these shades. These are like actually not that pigmented like I want. Can you see them? The next shade is called Chessboard. Sorry, I didn't get that much. It's a matte brown shade. And then here it is with the brush. So that one's pretty good. It's not a bad shade. It's a nice medium to light brown shade. So that's chessboard. The next sh shade in the next row is Arisabeth. I think I'm saying it right. The first shade is Heads Will Roll. That's the finger swatch. That one's actually really pretty and very pigmented. Then I'm going to do the brush, and it has like flecks of like gold glitter in it. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. That one is pigmented and nice. When you swatch it with a brush, the glitters don't show as much. It's more of a matte shade, so it's like a matte shade with flecks of glitter in it. The next shade is Bandersnatch. And that one's really pigmented. It's like a navy blue a little bit of teal in it. And then here is the brush swatch, which is actually nice. Blends out really nice. Next shade is Salazin Grum. Oh wow, that one's so pigmented. Look at that. Wow. F finger swatches, see what a difference it does? Okay, I'm gonna clean my um, this brush off and use that one. It's already got warm tones on it. And that swatch is really pigmented with a brush. So there's the finger swatch, and then there's the brush swatch. So really pretty. I can see this all over the lid. It's so gorgeous. This is probably my favorite color in the palette. The next shade and the last shade in the uh, Elizabeth row is Royal Flush. So there's the finger swatch. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. It's like an icy, yeah, it's just an icy shade, like an icy, icy beige, icy, icy beige. So I need a cleaner brush because I really don't like to like contaminate the colors of what I say, you know, because I want a clean brush for the lighter shades so it doesn't have any kind of um, darker shades in it. So here is the brush swatch. Sorry, this is a small brush. It does go on pretty nice. There it is, you can barely see it. Um, I'm pretty sure if you do a base on this to really make it pop, I put it in the inner corners 
and I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like in the inner corner. So I already have an inner corner highlight, but I really want to bump it up. So I brought you in a little closer, you can see. Can you see the difference between them? I'm wearing um, Nectar from the Peach Palette and then this on top, Royal Flush on top of Nectar in the inner corner. It does seem to brighten it a lot more. It's got that icy beige tone that I like in an inner corner highlight. So yeah, I kind of like it. Alright, last row and that is Time. This shade looked black to me, but it's actually not a black. So this is the shade, oops, I dirtied it, uh, Time. And that one is uber pigmented. Ooh, I love this shade. It's like a gunmetal color with super, like it's metallic. It is super metallic. So let's see what this looks like with a brush. Dip that in there. Oh, whoa. Check that out. That is super pigmented. It looks more metallic, of course, with a finger swatch and then less metallic when you blend it out with a brush. So see the difference? This is why I wanted to do both because I wanted you to see the difference between the two. Uh, finger swatches can be more pigmented because they are, I mean, it's your finger that you're using. You're pressing your finger into the actual pan and picking up more color and making it more dense on your finger. And then when you push it onto the skin, of course, it's gonna be pigmented. So don't base um, this off of like, an eyeshadow palette off of finger swatches, that's what I'm learning. Just kind of see how it blends. If you want to at a store, get your finger, of course, or if you carry a little small brush with you, like a tiny little brush that they don't sell at the store, um, and then just kind of like see what it looks like brushed on your skin, or even take a Q-tip and just blend it. Something like that, because you can't base it off of the finger so much, because of course it's gonna be more pigmented. You know what I mean? Next shade is Dream On, and this shade I am so disappointed in, it is just basically glitter, that's all it is. So there it is with the finger swatch, and then with a brush, it's not pigmented at all. You can't see it at all. See what I mean? If you, oh wow, it's pretty, it's glittery, but then when you put it with a brush, it's nothing. I would probably use that shade as a topper for like a matte shadow. If I want just a little bit of sparkle, I'd probably use Dream On on top of the lid. It's kind of like those shades from like the semi-sweet chocolate bar palette from Too Faced. Um, what is it, that pink, pinkish one? Like it's just pure glitter and it doesn't have any pigment at all. Um, it's kind of like that. Except it has just a little bit more pigment than that one. Next shade is Chronosphere. And that is actually a really pretty, like, metallic brown. And then here is the brush swatch. So it is pretty pigmented, actually. That will look nice all over the lid as well. I always like, I, I kind of gravitate towards metallic browns for the lid. And I have a lot of metallic browns, so I'm not like super excited about this shade, but it's pretty nonetheless. I mean, it does show pigmented on with a brush. So I imagine if you pack it on with a base, it's gonna even be like more metallic. It'll just bring out. So if you have like a um, coppery brown or even like a, uh, just a metallic brown base, and then you put Chronosphere on top, it's going to be super metallic. Last shade in the palette is Mirror. And that one's pretty pigmented. It's almost like a cool tone gray, metallic gray. And then with a brush, it's actually quite nice. It actually swatches with a brush almost matte or satin. Let me pick up another brush and see. This is probably not the best brush for it because there's a lot of fallout with this. I don't know. There it is with the brushes and then there it is with the finger. I mean, like I say, wow, the finger swatch is going to be so much more pigmented um, than the actual brush. But you're using a brush, not your fingers, to apply the eyeshadow to your eyes. And holy fallout. That's all I get to say. When I was doing it with a brush, and I'll show you. I'm going to use just a dense brush right here. I'm going to pick up 
the shade that I love, my second favorite shade, uh, Time. And when you do that, can you see how much product it kicks up? Can you see it? It kicks up a lot of product. And yeah, it kicks up a lot of product. So there's going to be a lot of fallout, so I would recommend doing your foundation after you apply this, these shadows. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about this. I am so underwhelmed by Metamorphosis because I did use a base last time I used it and it still didn't capture what it really was. It's like this beautiful iridescent like uh, periwinkle shade and then Cake, it seems like every single palette that I get has that pink shade just doesn't translate well. With a base it's amazing but by itself it's really really underwhelming. And then I was so excited about Hatter that green shade, uh, it, it, I don't know, swatching it looks amazing, but blending it, it just does not look that amazing, so I don't know, I'd probably have to need a base for most of these shadows. Um, I think the ones that I don't need a base for is probably going to be Kingdom, uh, Sel Selas and Grum, uh, Chromosphere, and Time, and probably Heads Will Roll, which is that teal one, and I mean, look at that thing. And it swatched really nice with the brush. Um, it, it just does that matte teal with like gold flecks of glitter in it. Um, I say my favorite is the uh, Salazen uh, Grum because that one is super pigmented with a brush. So I probably wouldn't use a base. So what I recommend this palette to you guys, it's up to you. Honestly, I don't like saying, oh, I'll recommend this, I'll recommend that. Um, usually, because I do work at Ulta, um, I if people ask me how good it is, I'll say, you know what, it's hit or miss. There's some colors that are pigmented. There's some colors that aren't. Don't test it with your fingers. Test it with a brush. That will pretty much tell you how it blends. And most of the colors don't blend very well or they blend to nothing. So if you do like the shades, I would recommend a sticky base so you can get that quality. But again, you shouldn't have to use sticky bases for shadows like that. I'm gonna keep this because this is a really pretty palette. I'm, I mean, I don't really have anything like Salas and Grum and Time. They're really pretty. And I mean, Paradox is really pretty too. So is Heads Will Roll. A lot of them are really pretty. So yeah, that's the end of this video. I just wanted to show you guys the palette um, with swatches and just kind of give you my overall first impressions thought on it. I have used it and like I say sticky bases honestly are making this palette a bit more usable I guess and more um, pigmented. You know what I mean? It's just you have to play around with it. Kind of give it a go. I am I was on the verge of like returning it because I was like you know what it's just ugh, ugh, I don't know. But I am getting two other palettes that are not going to be in any videos. I don't know how people feel about it, but it is by Lime Crime. It's not directly from the site. I actually bought it from a girl that just didn't want it. Um, and I want to see how those are. You will see them in my tutorials, but I will not. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, Lime Crime is, uh, they're amazing with the quality. That's just my opinion. I don't know the whole drama thing. I don't want to get into that because that's not what my channel is about. I just want to use shadows that work. I don't care who makes it. I just want to make shadows, you know, I want to use shadows that are worth my money. You know what I mean? And if it's going to be worth my money, why not use it? You know what I mean? So anyways, yeah, that's my little spiel about that. But I am going to have those palettes. And if you want to see looks on them, please comment down below which kind of looks you would like to see. I'm going to be getting the Venus 1 and 2 palette. And it's coming in today, so I'm excited. Um, and I do have Lime Crime Velveteens. Um, and I will be using those as well. I have used them in tutorials in the past, so I have I? I don't think I did. I don't know. I don't think I did. <laughs> I think I cut them out. I wasn't sure about that. So yeah, this is my Urban Decay video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. I just do this for fun. This is not my job. My job is actually in the beauty world, um, and I love to share my knowledge of makeup as much as I know. I'm self-taught, but I seriously hope I can be a makeup artist, a uh, special effects makeup artist, hopefully, in my future. But, you know, family does come first. Gotta take care of my kids, gotta take care of my husband. So I'm just doing what I can right now. But I love makeup. It's such an art form that I, I mean, I'm an artist 
you know, I paint, I draw, and I write, and I do poetry, and I, you know, it's just all that stuff. Music is my thing. I'm a very artistic person, so it's, makeup is just my other way of expressing my artisticness. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe like I told you before, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.